Hey everyone, on this video I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop with film photography. Yes, it doesn't sound right, but believe me, it is. Oh, by the way, these are my tips and tricks, my methods I use. If you have another idea, another tip and, or trick, well, leave it in the comment down below. After all, I'm not professing here, I'm just sharing some knowledge. So, if you want to share yours, feel free to do it. Unless you only want to share your film photographies with um, your family and close relatives, you need to digitize them just to put them online on social media. By the way, this is my Instagram account and if you want to subscribe to it, feel free to do so by clicking the link in the description. The first issue I'm going to tackle in this video is going to be dust and scratches. Dust is the most fierce enemy of the film photographer. Back in the day we were using a retouching kit and some triple uh, zero brushes to hide all the scratches and dust on the print. This is how you do it with Photoshop. So this is a picture I scanned without using any blower and leave it like it is. And as you can see there are some specks of dust and if I zoom in at 100% you can see this is pretty dramatic. There was a lot of damage due to the dust and everything. This time I used the blower to get rid of all the dust and stuff onto the negative and as you can see the image looks pretty clean. But then there are some specks, so one here, here, so there's also one there and another one at the bottom. Okay, one here and a small one here. The easiest way to fix this with Photoshop is to use this tool. This is the spot healing brush, so you just click on here and now you just pass it on and there we go. Make sure you are content where selected and there we go. There it is, there it is. Okay, I think there is one over there. Okay, oh, this is not right. Okay, Command Z and do it again. There we go. Sometimes you have to do it multiple times. Okay, this one over there, oh, it goes away on our knee over here. There we go. Hmm. Once again, do it again. Look at that. Well, I can even remove this uh, spot on the pole. There we go. The image is clean. On the other hand, on the color image, as you can see, there is multiple things to be done. One here, one here, one here. Uh, very useful trick when you have a line like this you just put your cursor onto here, just click once, and by maintaining the shift key pressed, you go up there, and there we go. That way it's faster, but as you can see, there's a lot of stuff to be done. We will come back to this picture later on, but as you can see, spending a few seconds just cleaning up your negative and your glass from the scanner will save you a lot of time in post. It may not sound like it, but this is a general rule in photography. If you can spend a few minutes just to clean up something, it will save you a lot of time in post-production. So use a blower and clean up your negatives. It will help you someday. Now let's talk about color cast. This image, for instance, has a greenish color cast to it, and I want to get rid of that. Back in the day, we used the wheels on the color enlarger to fix everything, and it was pretty common. Sometimes pictures come up just fine, but most of the time we had to correct something. This is how you do this with Photoshop. The way to correct color cast on a scanned image is to use the filter called Camera Raw Filter. So you simply go to Filter, and you check the camera raw filter it's gonna open your scan into camera raw just like it did with a raw file on a digital camera and the first thing you want to do is maybe use the white balance tool so you can do it manually by simply moving the slider like that or you can use the eyedropper tool this is here you might want to check for something that is a neutral color so the shoes look perfect for that matter and they are white shoes so they are they have to be neutral okay so i'm gonna use my eyedropper tool right here there we go and okay how does it look mm, well i think it looks yellowish sometimes you want to use another reference the gravel the asphalt here might be gray neutral so just try this hmm i like it better this way just uh check the before and after it is a color corrected photo sometimes it works just fine with uh, camera raw and obviously you can check the 
exposure if you want to or blacks and whites but that's another story for this picture this is how you correct the colors and the color cast this has to be done first before you do any other changes on the picture the way to correct the color cast of an image is to use a tool called the color balance so you simply go to image settings and the color balance and I like this tool because it reminds me of the color enlargers we used to get um, back in the day. So as I look at the image, I can see it's um, slightly greenish. So I can slide cursor to this point. Okay, mm, that's pretty efficient. I can use the yellow and blue if I want to warm up the image or to make it look colder. This might look correct for the end of the day or I can warm it up if I want to. And well, I kind of like it this way I'm still a little greenish so just a little bit more and there we go the image is now color corrected that was before and this is what I get now now let's talk about adjusting the brightness and contrast black point and white points back in the day we were using some multi-grade filters to do this and different density under the enlarger different papers and so on there is a way to do that in Photoshop and it goes on like this. We set up the color balance on this image. I'm going to try to show you how to adjust the brightness and contrast, black point and white point. Let's go to this one, shall we? This is the first one. And as you can see, my histogram tells me that there is no black points. Nothing is black on this image. And there's no white points neither. The image is pretty low contrast, even though it looks contrasty. To address this issue, you simply go to Image, Setting and Levels. Or you can call on an adjustment layer right here, Levels, okay, and there we are. This is your histogram. By using the Alt or Option key and keeping it pressed, when I click on this slider, you can see that the image turns totally white, meaning there is no black point on the image. If I go to the extreme and release the Alt button, you can see that, well, it's totally dark. You don't want that. What you want is the minimum, the bare minimum, if any, black points. Okay, that looks uh, a little bit better now. Now let's do it with the white points. Once again, you can see that this zone is totally overblown. But what you want, once again, is the minimum amount of white points. Now the black point and the white point I totally set. Let's do a before and after. This is before, this is after, before, after. As you can see in the shadows, there are still some details retained in the shadows, but it appears black. And same story goes for the white zone, the brightest zone. It's brighter, but there's still some amount of details. Let's do it with this color image by doing exactly the same maneuver by calling up an adjustment layer for levels. And as you can see here, there's nothing to do between the for the black points. It's already there. I cannot go further. And right here, oh yeah, I can tweak it just a little, but you may not see any difference. Now I can use the mid range, the middle slider over there and slide it up to get an image that looks a little bit brighter. Or I can do it so it looks darker. That would look better in black and white, let's face it. But for color, you may want to get some details in the shadow so it doesn't look so dark and so hard contrast same story goes for this one this is pretty dark i'm gonna close this window up once again levels okay so black point is set white point could be set like this a minimum amount of white okay look before and after you won't see anything but now I can move the slider right there to get it a little bit brighter. It looks better this way, isn't it? Look, before, after. These adjustments apply to the entirety of the image. What if we want to apply it to a certain zone, let's say the sky or a face? Well, back in the day we were using some pieces of cardboard, sometimes a piece of cardboard with a hole poked through it, and we were using this to remove some density on the ground or to add density to the sky, so we went from this 
to this. And for portraits, we were adding some density to hot spots on the forehead and removing density to the eyes. That is pretty common. This is how you want to do this with Photoshop. Let's go back to this image. We already adjusted it for the global image. And there is this zone over here, which is, uh, well, overblown. I mean, it's way too bright to my taste. So I'm going to show you how I can adjust this. I'm just calling a second layer adjustment for levels, okay? And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to tune up this slider right here and, well, make it brighter. So this zone looks pretty awesome. I mean, the silhouettes, you get details in the highlights. It looks good, but when you look at the entirety of the image, it's totally too dark. There is a way to change that. So you have this layer mask over here. When it's white, it appears it is active, but if you use black, it's going to be masked. It's a mask. Okay. So I'm going to fill this with black by using the command backspace key. So as you can see, my layer mask goes totally black. It's inactive. And I want it to be active just right here. So I'm going to grab a brush. Okay. It's way too big. So I'm going to reduce the size like so. And I'm going to paint it white. And by painting it white, I'm painting it black. There we go. If you think that it is too much, you can adjust the opacity. And there we go. Before and after. Before and after. This image looks more pleasing and more balanced than before. Now let's look at this one. The sky is really pleasing. I mean, you have details with the clouds and everything, but on the trees, it's way too dark. It's contrasty. In fact, it was during a very hot summer, so light was contrasty. So how to address this? Once again, I'm going to call up a layer, an adjustment layer for levels, but this time I'm going to brighten it up just like I did before. Well, just like this. Oh, I get more details. It's very pleasing. I can also adjust this one to reduce the amount of blacks, but I'm not going to do this right now. The trees look much better, but the sky is brightened. Okay. We're going to do the same again. By pressing the command key and backspace, I'm going to fill my adjustment layer mask over there, totally black. And now I'm going to paint it white to brighten the trees, just like so. You don't want to overdo it. Just doing it this way. Oh, on the top of the trees there, you can do that. You can even do some a hollow, a halo thing around the, the trees. It's pretty cool. And if you think that it is too much, you can also adjust the opacity of this adjustment layer to reduce the effect. So right now we go from this to this. It looks better, right? What about you guys who don't use a scanner, but instead you use a DSLR and a macro lens? First thing we want to do is to crop the image by using the cropping tool, uh, just like so. You don't want to crop too much of the image, but you can do it this way. And there we go. Okay, well, I want to invert the image. So by pressing the command I, I'm going to reverse the color. And there is this blue cast, bluish, cyanish, whatever you want to call it. I want to get rid of that. There's a way to do so. You may think that the color balance is going to be helpful again, but as you can see, it's, well, it's not powerful enough. My favorite method is to call on an adjustment layer for levels, and we're going to adjust it color by color. Red, green, blue, or channel by channel. Let's go to the reds, and as you can see, just like before, pressing the Alt button, and I'm going to do this so I got the minimum amount of points, just like this. Okay, red, green, same story goes, but this time I'm going to do it with both sliders. As you can see, the image is getting better already. And now the blue, same story, pressing the Alt button, just so I get a minimal amount, and hmm, there we go. It's already much better than before. Just look, we went from this to this. I think the image is some greenish cast, so I'm going to go back to the green channel. And this time I'm going to adjust the mid, the middle slider, just to get rid of the greens. Okay, I think it's a little bit cold, so I'm going to go to the blue 
and once again I'm gonna warm it up a little bit and there we go we went with just one adjustment layer from this to this Surprisingly enough, using a DSLR and a macro lens gives you awesome results, better than a mid-range scanner. So yes, it's more tedious, it, has, it requires more work, but come on, in the end, the results are just perfect. When it's time to save the image, you want to make sure you are using the correct color profile. Sometimes a scanner can use some proprietary color profile, so you go in Edit and Convert to Profile. As you can see, it's the Epson standard uh, RGB, and you want to convert it to sRGB before saving it in JPEGs. That way, your images are going to be compatible with most apps and software if you want to share them on your phone, on social media, etc. Use sRGB for export only. It's going to be the most compatible. Is this cheating? Some of you might be thinking it is. After all, we are using some digital photography tools to apply them to film photography. Well, just look at this one. Going from this to this ain't cheating. After all, like I said, we had solutions to correct, to color cast on a negative. Sometimes the film had an issue or stuff like this, but that's not cheating. And even going from this to this, might not be cheating, you see, some people were so talented with brushes and retouching kits that they were able to do this and you wouldn't see it. So no, that's not cheating. I mean, using the tools you have today to do something ain't cheating. I'm sorry. It might be easier to do it with Photoshop instead of requiring some skills with a brush and stuff like this, but that ain't cheating. And after all, it is you, your photograph. These are your pictures and you do whatever you want to them. But in any case, that's all I've got for you today. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, a comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.